Today, I'd like to talk a little bit about a, this is not a distro. This is a, it's a, it's a means to show off the latest and greatest versions of the software. And what, what are we talking about? We're talking about KDE Neon. So I guess the first question is, why would you be interested in using KDE Neon? There's three reasons that I can think of that you might be interested in doing it. First, maybe you're a new user to KDE and you want to learn it. You want to spend some time with the latest versions of the software. The second reason is, yeah, you want to use those latest versions of all of the KDE software that's out there. Not just the desktop environment, but all of the packages that accompany it. Uh, and finally, you want... You want a long time uh, support release, but you want the newest version of the kernel you can get a hold of because maybe you're contemplating new hardware. Maybe you're maybe you just want to play with all the new things that are coming in the new Linux kernels and don't want to be bothered with a rolling release. What is KDE Neon anyway? It, it is it is developed by the KDE folks themselves. They took Ubuntu uh, long-term uh, LTS, and this is released version 2004. It includes this, the KDE Neon includes the latest KDE desktop, and that's version, at the time I'm making this video, 525.4. And it also it has the version of the kernel with 5.15.0. Who is this for? Uh, it's for a KDE enthusiasts, people that really like KDE, and they, and they want to always have the latest and greatest software on their desktops. There's another way to get this too. KDE also offers an integrated laptop called the KDE Slimbook, which of course is based on uh, the Slimbook architecture and the Slimbook uh, laptop itself. But they do make some changes to it in order to accommodate the things that they want in their, in their laptop. They make both a... I think there's both a 14-inch and a 15.4-inch uh, version of the of that Slimbook, and the last time I looked, it was based on uh, on, on AMD Ryzen uh, 5000 series chips. When you go to the download page for KDE Neon, you'll find there are four editions. So the first one is the user edition. That's the mainline branch of KDE Neon, and that's ideal for anyone to use it. The second edition that you'll find out there is the testing edition, and that's where you're going to find pre-release versions of KDE and KDE software. So there is also an unstable branch. The unstable edition doesn't mean it crashes a lot, although you probably will find lots of bugs in this release. Uh, there, It is really meant to uh, provide a, a vehicle for people that want to do early testing on the KDE software platform. And then finally, if you're a, a developer, you get all of the things that are in Unstable Edition, plus you get the development tools that KDE ships along with uh, for the developers to use to actually build tools that either use KDE or are developing in the KDE platform itself. What does it need? This is what they say, 2 gigahertz x86-64 CPU. Sorry, they don't have the staff to support a 32-bit version of the OS. So they do recommend a dual core or higher, which I think you'll find in most distributions today. That's going to be the case. Uh, two gig of memory is all you need to run this, although uh, there are times when you're going to need four. I noticed that when I had the browser up and, of course, a lot of pages open. Yeah, consumption of memory is pretty rapid um, today with most browsers. So uh, You will need about 10 gig of disk space, but I would recommend 25 gig. Uh, also, a 1024 by 768 screen resolution would be the minimum or higher. Uh, yeah, the higher the better, of course, uh, because it gives you more real estate to see things and do things. Let's go take a look. I guess this, this is the best way. Let's install it, and then I'll show you some key features and maybe even try looking at the some of the security elements of the release like I always do is the live C, the live uh, ISO. So we're going to go ahead and install the system and the first thing you see is calamari's. So we'll just follow the we'll just follow the directions. It's pretty similar to just about every other install of a Linux distro. Nothing nothing that's too out of the ordinary. There we go. That's close enough. 
Yeah, the generic is fine. That should be fine. Even though it's not it's not 105, but that's all right. We're all good there. I'm going to erase the disk. It puts down an awfully big partition for the uh for the slot <clears throat> that's based two it looks like it's 2x yeah 2x of memory if, if i wanted to fix that i could do that easy enough i could just go manually partition it the way i want it but this is fine okay and uh, we'll go ahead and start the install i'll be back when when this is done so it's all done it took about a little over three minutes so we'll go ahead and restart this and now we're setting up the environment on my local drive so i think the first thing i'm going to do is change this background wallpaper and that's because i don't want to confuse this with i'm running kde on my asai linux and so i don't want to confuse the two uh, that looks fine we'll do that and then let's see, we want dark, definitely. And we'll click apply. Uh, much better. Okay, let's go find out our usual things and also get some software installed to help us. I'm gonna go ahead and run console. You're supposed to use Yeah, okay. Yeah, we're going to let Pecan do it because you're supposed to use Pecan in order to pick up the latest releases. I'll go ahead and bring down the stuff that I need. That's where I left it. How do I know? Because the screen size. Okay, so we're at about 609 meg of memory. Now, according to what I've read on their site, they, on the KDE Neon site, they recommend two gig, two gig of memory. Um, yeah, that's probably enough, but I wonder what happens if I open a browser here. Usually this will be telling on how much memory I have left. Uh, it, it ate into it, didn't it? So it, it just grabbed about 400 which I guess is fine. I mean, yeah, you could run this. Um, yeah, you can, I'm just I'm just gonna quit this and let's try glance. Okay. All right. So let's see. We got 1.22 gig. It's right here. A little hard to read on this screen because of the green color. But 1.22 gig to three, uh, and that includes the app cache. Our system overhead is about, it's under 1%, and that's with the browser open. So let's go ahead and close that. And then we'll give it a minute to shut the, all those processes down that it just brought up. So it returned, yeah, it returned about a, a about 100 meg, and then the, the overhead is, less than a percent so it's pretty lightweight it's taken with the stuff i just installed about 6.2 gig yeah how many packages did it install uh with mine 1738 so yeah i mean that's just kind of where we are today what else do i want to know let me bring this up and then we'll go down here to about so we're on 525.4 of KDE Plasma. The framework is 5.97. The uh, cute version is 515.5. And we're on 515.0-46 of the kernel. And it is, this is supposed to be supporting Wayland, but I see they're on X11, which is fine. That's all good. I don't know if it would have had the choice. Let me log out for a second and see. There we go. There it is. All right, let's put it in Waylon and see what happens. It's supposed to support Waylon. OK, 
Okay, it looks like it came up. Let's take a look and see if it is running Waylon. About. Yes, it is running Waylon. Okay, let's let's try the browser. Okay, that was a little funky. First, should be 104. Yeah, 104. And this is not an ESR version of the browser. This is a regular version. I don't know if it's really fair to test this, but we're going to do it anyway. Uh, clone. All right. So as as usual, it doesn't know what this is, that's, and that's all right. It'll figure out. It'll figure it out. Ooh, I just saw something. There was a bad one there. Oops, sorry, I got the hiccups. All right, sixty two, two hundred sixty one tests, two plugins. Let's just skip up to the top because there was something that. Rebooted the system is most likely. I get this every once in a while, and eventually it just goes away. I did reboot the system. Um, IP tables, yeah, that's all the same. That's all the same. All that is the same. Okay, so we have one that needs to be per. That's probably why it's telling me I need to restart. Sometimes it gets a little confused. I, I don't see anything unique, or, but that, that is, of course, a little low. Let's go back for a moment, and we'll talk about some of my thoughts about this. So my final thoughts are, it's very easy to install this. Uh, and for today's world, uh, the number of packages is, is smaller than most of them. It's not saying a lot. But it is nonetheless, it's a small number of packages. It does have low overhead in both in terms of memory use and CPU use once you let the system settle. And it's only occupying about 5.6 gigabyte of disk. They do not recommend that you use APT. We talked about that during the install. And the reason for that is APT is based on the the... Uh, Ubuntu baseline, so you may not be getting the latest and greatest packages. PKCon, P-K-C-O-N, is the utility you should be using to be maintaining and updating your release. So make sure you read the man pages on how it works, and the commands are a little bit different than APT. Uh, and yeah, and, it, and just use this uh, in order to do that. So with that, that's all I had today. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope to see you all again in the next video, and bye for now.